EMG question of the day. The potential recorded from a single muscle fiber activation can result from A. A motor action unit potential B. An spontaneous motor unit potential C. An spontaneous muscle fiber potential D. All of the above. This cartoon represents an anatomical motor unit. The electrical activation of an anatomical motor unit produces a motor unit potential. The amplitude of a motor unit potential depends on the action potential of the muscle fibers passing closest to the recording surface of the electrode. Here I have represented three fibers contributing to the amplitude of the motor unit potential. The biological factor influencing the duration of a motor unit potential is the time passed between the arrival of the first and the ex exiting of the last muscle fiber action potentials through the cache area of the electrode. Hence, duration is dictated by the width of the end plate zone contributing to the motor unit action potential. So let's say that a monopolar electrode is in the position you see in this frame. The first muscle fiber action potential to reach the optic area of the electrode is the one with the neuromuscular junction closest to the needle. The last muscle fiber action potential to contribute to the duration is the one originating the furthest from the electrode. So as we know, more fibers contribute to the duration than to the amplitude of a motor unit potential. In this cartoon, to make this point, I have represented five muscle fibers contributing to the duration, but the reality is that the number of fibers contributing to the duration is much larger in most instances. Be it as it may, as you see here, the width of the end plate zone contributing to a potential determines the duration of the motor unit potential. Notice that in this frame I have extended broken line from the edge of the end plate zone to the line representing the duration of the potential. I have now introduced a potential with the amplitude and duration corresponding to the elements shown above. The serration relate to the synchrony or lack of synchrony of the muscle fibers potentials traveling through the electrode catch area. The takeoff to the fiber with the neuromuscular junction contributing to the potential that is closest to the needle and the return to baseline to the fiber with the neuromuscular junction contributing to the potential most distant from the needle. In this new anatomical motor unit, there are fewer muscle fibers and the end plate zone is narrower. The consequence of these features are that the amplitude is unchanged because it is only influenced by the muscle fibers action potential passing closest to the needle and those have not changed, but the duration will be briefer than in the previous example because the end plate zone is narrower, as you can see here. This will be reflected in the discharge having the same amplitude but being briefer and probably with less turns because of the more restricted width of the end plate zone. The third anatomical motor unit is represented with some muscles fibers in gray. I have done so to indicate that they are unable to generate an action potential, either because of fiber damage or because of physical or chemical denervation. Hence, the potential from such an anatomical motor unit will be shorter because only two fibers will contribute to the amplitude, those whose action potential traveling nearest to the recording surface of the EMG needle and briefer because of the narrower functional end plate zone, as indicated by the broken lines. The result is, as expected, a shorter and briefer potential. The last anatomical motor unit here represented has only one muscle fiber, capable of generating an action potential. Since the fiber's action potential will pass close to the electrode, it will contribute to the amplitude and the duration, but whereas the duration will be significantly less than in the prior example, the amplitude will be relatively less impacted, as illustrated in the potential. The bottom line is that in pathological circumstances, a potential arising from a single muscle fiber, thus having all the characteristics of a muscle fiber potential, an amplitude less than 300 microvolts, and a duration of about 7 milliseconds can be the expression of an action motor unit potential, the basic component of a spontaneous potential, such as those found in neuromyotonia, or the sole expression of a spontaneous potential as we see in some fasciculations. Yet, 
it can also be the result of a denervated muscle fiber, as represented in this frame corresponding to a fibrillation. So the answer to this question is D. Thank you very much for your attention.